Last week we spent several days travelling from Broome past Cape Levique to the beautiful Silica Bay. Our next stop was Silver Gull Creek situated in Yampi Sound. So going through Yampi Sound, we had to be quite accurate with our tacks because we were dodging through some reefs and we were really trying to work the tide. And we were making our way to Silver Gold. Now it was kind of difficult to see Silver Gold. Um, and in a lot of the creeks in the Kimberleys, it's really hard to make out that they are there because it's quite high country. But we did want to make our way in there because there's a caretaker's camp in there and an old BHP site with a barge landing with some fresh water. As I said, the camp at Silver Gold used to be an old um, mining barge landing and that was many years ago. The landing itself is just now a couple of rusty poles and to use them and come alongside you really need your yacht in control and gently gently is the order of the day. This may just look like an old rusty barge landing but this barge landing was delivering fresh spring water to our boat. Here's a pretty, pretty important moment for us, we've just pulled into Silver Gull, we've met Milton the caretaker. Uh, and now Pascal's just having basically a water party. Fill her up, Joe. <laughs> Boat laundry. In case you were wondering, our laundry bucket is made out of an old methylated spirits bottle that we use to fuel our stove. So we cut off the top of the methylated spirits bottle. It's a 20 litre bottle, is that right now? 20 litre. 20 litre methylated spirit bottle. And there you have it, the perfect boat bucket and laundry bucket. And that water is getting nice and grey. Disgusting. Sidewards. Just 
skull being very intrepid here. private spa. <laughs> you know it's going to be cold. <laughs> it's shady. <laughs> <laughs> that is a cold water hole. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're in our first Kimberley's water hole. We've really been looking forward to it and it is... Icy cold. <laughs> it is icy cold. <laughs> I'm a bit of a sook when it comes to icy cold water. Yeah, I love icy cold water. <laughs> But um, yeah, so we're surrounded by birdsong, butterflies, butterflies, and we feel clean and not salty for the first time in a little while. Yes. It's really great. <laughs> oh, I just got bitten by a shrimp. <laughs> it was only a little shrimp. It's all right. I gave you a shot. We won't even be able to bite him back. He's that small. <laughs> so we're working the tides anyway. So we've got a little bit limited here, um, but this is a nice foretaste. We've seen a crocodile, this is our first swim in a, a water hole. Mm -hmm. It can only get better, really. So. the propellers. Yeah, so we're playing with the bow and we're playing with the bow. Boulder boat strikes again. <laughs> We've got an equal part salt and sugar mixture here that we're going to sprinkle over the top of the fish to let it cure for about six hours before we smoke it this evening. You can add pepper, coriander, crushed coriander seeds, juniper berries. We're just going to go simple for this one because we just want to have a, we just want the flavour of the fish and smoke. Oh, what about some black pepper or white pepper? We don't have any white pepper. Mm. You can put some black pepper on there if you like. Now, so we're also adding pepper as well as salt and sugar because Troy loves pepper. Mm -hmm. The salt and sugar mixture will draw some of the moisture out of the fish, which will leave a nice basting sauce while we're smoking it in the barbecue. So there's the juice that we got out of the fish. Here we've got a little bit of rum. So I'm going to just have a splash of that. This is precious, so I can't put too much on this fish. Mmm, delicious. So we'll just pour that back over. And that's going to be a treat. Put them on the side away from the flame. Oh, I can smell the rum in here. Just wash any excess salt off with the brine. Oh, I can already smell those wood chips. Yep. So I've closed off that lid, so there's only a few holes. But yeah, that, that's, that's smoking it up. It smells delicious already. That is really good. Oh, that bit tastes like rum. The bonus. Yeah. That's delicious. So that's the beautiful thing. It was sugar and salt. I, I did splash a bit of rum in, but it's... And a bit of pepper. And a bit of pepper. 
And then what some scabby old wood that we found on the beach. Yeah. And that is world class. It's so good. It's really good. It's premium. I guess fresh fish. It's all, it's fresh. Mm. It's fresh. Fresh rum. <laughs> fresh fish. Sometimes you just got to sacrifice a hook every now and again. Better to lose a hook than to rough him up anymore. Oh, he bloody, he bit off our sinkers. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty shark. <laughs> I think that's a sign. Time to stop. Time to stop. Should Time to go here. for gold band snapper. Yeah, I think we better just have a bit more of a targeted approach mm. rather than just... Any old thing. Yeah, just fighting fish for no good reason. All right, so we've so we found a bit of a deep hole, and uh, Pascal was just working out where to throw. Just throw anywhere. Yeah. Oh. All right. So all it needs to do now is sink. Did <laughs> even jig it yet? <laughs> So try and keep everything gentle. Oh, little finger mark. Oh, that feels codish. Oh, like an estuary cod? <laughs> like a little, yeah. It's fighting hard. Oh, got him out in the open now. <laughs> <sighs> Yep, oh. it's a cod. <laughs> it's a cod. Isn't he pretty? Mmm. Beautiful. Oh, he's nicely hooked in the corner of the mouth. Too. Here we are coming into our new home. For the next few days anyway. There's a, there's a great look at the tidal run that goes on here. This is the passage we're about to shoot. A bit of white water yachting. <laughs> oh, look at that. So, we're just navigating a few whirlpools and swirls here. We've got a few uh, homemade linseed crackers drying on the roof as we do so. Kimberly Currents. It might seem a little bit cavalier just to be cruising here with uh, with such a raging current, but this is a making tide. It's sweeping in, and generally we found the water will go to the deeper channels on the incoming tide, whereas on the outgoing tide you might not necessarily have that same guarantee. There's a little bit of a back eddy going sweeping back towards those rocks so we'll give it a bit of a, a wider berth and we'll just ride that current in. We love this sort of stuff. 1200 rpm on the little uh, 16 horsepower Yanmar and we're doing six and a half knots through here so thank you Kimberley Current if you can work it all out to your favour um, then it does pay dividends. Rubber 
So today the gorge that we want to look at uh, requires working the tide a bit and I'll, I'll tell you what that means. So at the moment if we go and have a look at the sounder it says that there's about two and a half metres under us. But the tidal prediction for today is five and a half metres and it's going to go down to less than a metre. So that would mean that at low tide we'd be high and dry a couple of metres where we're sitting here. So what we're going to do is take a note of the time that we've dropped anchor here, have a look. We're going to explore as the tide rises and then as the tide comes back we want to make it back in time and get the yacht out of here and somewhere deeper and uh, it'll all be good. You can careen a boat to clean the bottom. You, you can take the bottom to let the tide go and it leaves it high and dry and you can clean it. But on a croc infested mud flat it's not the spot. to a fair bit of trouble to hoist our gear up here and the reason being is that the tides are so huge here in the Kimberleys so if something should happen to the dinghy and it flips or gets caught under something and sinks this is the stuff we don't want to lose if the outboard engine gets flooded that doesn't matter I can just pull it apart and fix it but we've got our oars here to get the hell out of here um, and now that we are in the Kimberleys we take this blue bucket with us and it's got lots of stuff. It's got WD-40, it's got tools in here. If I have to pull that outboard apart, I can do it with everything in this drum. This will hold fresh water if we're stuck out here for days. There's means of making fire, there's an e in here. V-sheets, we can attract attention, bright iron sheets, or we can uh, use it to catch rain, hide under, all sorts of stuff. So, tape. Pascal's put some soup in here, I guess once you've been mauled by insects. And uh, yeah, insect repellent. But that's it, so this is our survival kit. We've got a fishing rod, we've got everything. So even if we got stuck here for a couple of days waiting for someone to come by, we're good. So this is the sort of thing that we really uh, are interested in when we're cruising. Right there is salt water that we could drive the dinghy up to. And right there is beautiful, clean, fresh drinking water. So you can bring the boat right up with all your jerry cans and that's it. Fresh water. Oh, and Pascal.
All of these rivers are real oases. It is dry and barren out there, but in here along these rivers, it's like a rainforest. Oh, what's this approaching? <laughs> Pascal with butterflies. And this is just an absolutely alive waterway. So all of these are broad leaf plants. They're thriving, they're keeping this water clean. It's not, it's not algae. There's nothing toxic about this. Lots of living animals. The water tastes great. There's no guardia here to worry about. So you don't need to sterilize the water. Amazing. So all along here, this little stream's edges are as much roots as rock. Ancient paperback. Go away! What are you saying there, Pasky? Sorry, little fresh water crocodile. I jumped off the rock. Little fresh water crocodile. Yeah. I'll be there in a sec. So here's our first water hole that we've come to on this little stretch. But we're not convinced that there won't be a saltwater crocodile in here. We can't really see the bottom. It would be pretty safe, but it's only just the two of us here. So we're just going to let discretion be the better part of valor. <laughs> and we're just going to go one waterfall up. There's plenty of waterfalls. We're not missing out. This is how we like to stay fit on rural. <laughs> oh, look at this technique. <laughs> so there we go, we're pretty convinced that no crocodile can make it up either that little chute or the one that we just came up. Oh, it's beautiful, it's not that cold actually. Well, it's definitely worth the, uh, the exercise, the climb to get here. Sometimes exploring untouched wilderness can be a little bit awkward. There's no walking trails. There's no animal trails. There's nothing. So I'm just going to follow a Pascal trail. So as pretty as the last place was, what it didn't have was a lot of sun warmed rocks. And that's what you really need to make a perfect swimming hole. So this is a bit of a two stage one. Surrounded by, it's a pretty crappy view actually, look at that. Rubbish. Much colder. Much colder? Mm. How shall I like it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
baby, you brought me a flower. A lotus flower. What a lily. Mm. Good? Get a crunch. So the tides come right up. But I can see the dinghy in the distance. There's Troy. So it's a float, which is great. So the salt water's down there, which is still nice and fresh. I think we'll just wait for the tide. Right here, got everything we could want. The waterfall, so fresh water. We'll just have a little snooze. Should only be an hour or so. spectacular falls but they're not really that spectacular at the moment they're more of a, a wet season spectacular dry season there a little bit What's this for spectacular? so so Ooh. don't do that Troy it's a pretty spectacular view it's a pretty spectacular view it's pretty spectacular rocks so. pretty spectacular echo how many times can we say spectacular? I need a little water hole. Mm. You can imagine what it would be like in wet season with all this water coming down to the black rocks. Wouldn't be very healthy for us. Oh no, we wouldn't be able to be here right now. Yeah, well, if you're a rock climber, which I'm not, but if you are, you should outfit a yacht and come to the Kimberleys. Hey. I think uh, the nice thing about clinging to a rock face getting the water is you don't take it for granted anymore. Now we've got to get the water down. I think Easy. Troy has a cunning scheme in mind. You're going to carry it down between your teeth. The old lowering it down with a rope trick. Jack, I'd say. Mm -hmm. oh, that's exactly what it was. Mm. One cast, one fish. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's still got his little bars on him. Yeah. Look what's going on here. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> We want to let this little fella go. Mm -hmm. 
Get in there! <laughs> Do I want to catch something that's chasing things that are that size? Mm. That's a question. Oh. <laughs> oh, little Trevally. <laughs> <laughs> You're already hear him grunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how long Tom ended up on the beach at the sand bank? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how long Tom skidded onto the onto the mud? <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. I really want to touch him. Spikes? No, not spikes, the health of the fish itself. Mm. Okay, Pascal, yeah. one cast, one fish. Okay. <laughs> oh, as long as you cast it. Give it some erratic life. <laughs> Another small trevally? No, it's a finger mark for a jack. And there's other fish going for it? Like a cod or something? What's that fish? Oh, a little finger mark. Look at that. And that's a cod trying to. Oh no, it's another little finger mark. Mm. We need to up some of the size, I think. Oh! A kingfisher just came straight for your head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh! Quit drifting into the mud, so we're changing our operation here. <laughs> The old folded ingy is nice and stable for such operations. Oh, something bigger. Oh, the old stinky cods. They fight, they fight well, don't they? <laughs> Mm. He's not big enough to cause us too much problems here. Mm. That might be a good little queenie. It looks like a foul hooked fish, whatever it is. That's a little queenie fish. Oh, look at that little shark come to get him. Mm. <laughs> 